They look like miniature lobsters and taste quite scrumptilicious. So why are crawdads considered such a problem? Because they're lean, mean eating machines. They'll eat anything and everything. Crayfish are omnivorous, feeding on aquatic plants and animals, including lily pads, insects, snails, frogs, baby turtles, fish and fish eggs, and even garter snakes. Crayfish, also called crawdads or mud bugs, are not native to Arizona. They were introduced to our waterways in the 1940s as live bait. Since then, crayfish have become a problem to Arizona's natural habitats and native species. Crayfish can turn a naturally healthy, thriving river that is home to many species of plants and animals into a biological void that is home to, well, just crayfish. In Arizona, crayfish reduce water quality by eating aquatic plants that filter and oxygenate it. With plants gone, soil is no longer held in place. Feeding or burrowing crayfish stir up gravel, rocks, and soil, increasing the silt in the water. The presence of crawdads is easily demonstrated, making it an ideal subject for a Focus Wild Arizona lesson plan. Focus Wild Arizona is the environmental education program for the Arizona Game and Fish Department. What we try to do is reach out to teachers and provide them with the resources that they need to do standards-based education in their classroom. We're going to make our observations for the day. So what I want you to do is make sure you have your science notebooks out. Focus Wild develops curriculum, lesson plans, and resources, including posters and books that teachers can use in the classroom. All of these resources are available on our website at azgfd.gov slash focuswild. The lesson that the teachers can actually download from the website, it's called The Trouble with Crayfish. Part of the fun of the teacher workshops is actually getting to run through the lessons. Trouble with Crayfish starts with an activity where the kids, or in this case the teachers, become a fish in the stream. Then you introduce a crawfish. Now the crayfish moves a little different. Okay? You're going to have to hop. <laughs> and see what happens to the fish and to the stream. So they get to sort of role play this and that's followed up then by sort of a writing exercise where they're actually shown two pictures of a stream, one that has crayfish invasion and one that doesn't have crayfish invasion. And they compare those. Look at it. Think about your, com your observations in your head. And then they actually have to write a recommendation to the Arizona Game and Fish Department about what should be done about this particular stream. And so it, it, it takes science and then it integrates the language arts aspect into it as well. Focus Wild gets teachers out in the field to discover these lessons for themselves. For teachers, what we wanted to do is bring them out in the field and actually see the damage that crayfish can cause and just how they can take over an ecosystem, destroying the native fish, destroying the plants, basically turning a creek into to nothing, to just this, this, this murky, dense um, waterway that not a lot of other things can survive in. And so we bring them out here so that they can see that for a couple reasons. One, so that if they happen to be using crayfish in their classroom, they don't decide to release them back in the waters because that's where they feel they should belong. And also so that they can take that understanding about non-native species, invasive species, back to their classroom to say, you know what, this is why we support native fish and, and native species and we don't want to have these other invasives out here and these are the problems that they cause. Trouble with crayfish is only one of many lesson plans offered through Focus Wild. Teachers have a whole smorgasbord to choose from. So on the website, there's a variety of different lesson plans that they can download um, from all grade levels, all the way right now down to basically kindergarten through high school. Lessons that, that are absolutely free, most of them available as a PDF that can be downloaded. The resources come with them if they require maps or anything like that that's included with the lesson plans. Some of the workshops that we've offered and are, are going to be offering in the future, along with the crayfish one, we, we've offered you know one focus just on predators where we take people out to Mount Lemon actually and we, we track wow. mountain lions and we track bears. <laughs> you get, yeah. Oh, there it is. Look, There's there a baby. Baby yeah. crayfish. Got a baby. We're going to be hopefully in the near future offering a bat workshop. We're going to be offering one on black-footed ferrets. Some of these these really cool wildlife that's going on in Arizona that they can come and, and, and at least experience firsthand and then find ways to bring them into the classroom. Other very popular resources include grant opportunities. Teachers can get grants to build schoolyard habitats focused on native plants and wildlife. In addition, the department offers an environmental education grant for those interested in developing an environmental education program. They can actually apply for $10,000 to get those resources for their classroom. 
It is against the law to release crayfish or any other plant or animal into Arizona waters without permission from the state. That includes live crayfish throughout most of Arizona. And that creates a small problem. How do teachers get the crawfish to the class if they can't transport them? Now we have been working with the school districts and with other branches within the department to actually come up with a compromise where schools can acquire the crayfish, but to do so they're going to have to contact the department and figure out the ways to do that because there's some certain things, there's some forms that they have to download and fill out, they have to make sure that the crayfish are being handled responsibly and that an individual actually um, is caring for those in a way so that we ensure that they don't get put back in the waters. Money to put on these workshops is provided by the Heritage Fund, which comes from the state lottery. So the crawfish we caught today? Eat them! We're actually going to be boiling them up. We're having basically an old-fashioned crayfish boil. We're going to throw them in there with some potatoes and some corn and hopefully have a, have a, a little meal out of them. This is really delicious. So our goal for the for environmental education is hopefully to make people aware of what's in their own backyard. I mean, so, so they can step outside and they, they have an appreciation for what's going on out there. They may not necessarily become hunters and fishers, we understand that, but hopefully they'll at least become supportive of, of the outdoors and some of the programs that the, that the um, Arizona Game and Fish Department may do in the future. Because these students that we're teaching now are going to become the voters and are going to become the, the massive citizenry of, of Arizona in the next few years. It's a male, it has no holes. Is this a cute? Look at this one. Whoa.